Praise God, everybody. It is so good to the Lord. see and hear your voices tonight, and we're very grateful that you took the time to sign in with us tonight. Amen. We pray that all is well with you. This is uh, Pastor Herring uh, from uh, uh, Inspiration Church, and uh, we're going to do a little teaching tonight because we all need it. Amen. Um, Bow your heads in prayer with me, if you would. Our Father, who are in heaven, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for, oh God, your son Jesus, who died on the cross for us. Yes. And we thank you for every good and perfect gift. Ask, Lord, that you bless us now as we begin to teach your word, that you let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 We're going to go right uh, into the teaching tonight, and uh, we're going to start out from Luke, the 16th chapter, and um, we began our teaching from the 19th verse, uh, actually the 16th verse of uh, Luke, the 16th chapter, Luke 16. Oh, I'm sorry, and the 19th verse, and we'll read some of that. Now, of course, this scripture, of course, is uh, about Lazarus uh, and the uh, rich man, and we want to uh, uh, talk some about what happened to Lazarus and the rich man after death, after death. Amen. So I'm going to start some reading from the 19th verse, and the Bible says there was a certain man uh, a rich man, uh, which was clothed in purple uh, and fine linen and fared strumptiously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So we see from that scripture to that point that, of course, uh, uh, the rich man had all opportunity to do something for this poor man. Amen. But uh, he didn't. Amen. Lazarus, somebody laid him at his gate. He was a beggar. And uh, that's the only way that he could uh, uh, get food is to beg for money. And so they would lay him at this rich man's gate. And the rich man had to see him because he was at the gate and he came out by him every day. Amen. But uh, he had no heart to help this man along the way. Now, uh, the 22nd verse says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. Now, we notice the difference there because uh, uh, it says the bag uh, beggar died and was carried into the uh, bosom of Abraham, which means his soul, spirit, was taken into the uh, bosom of Abraham. But the rich man died, and he was just buried. So it shows the change that took place immediately after death. After Amen. death, there was uh, uh, the soul and spirit departed from both of them. And uh, we'll see, as we go a little further, what actually happened. So we see now that the rich man died, and it does not say where he was at, but he was buried, which means uh, uh, the 23rd verse is, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham fall, and Lazarus in his bosom. So uh, the rich man, of course, uh, went immediately to what we call Hades. Amen. He went immediately to, to hell once, as soon as he died. And uh, uh, at that time, I will mention that uh, Hades and uh, Paradise, which is heaven, was located both in the same place. Amen. Amen. Both located in the same place. Uh, but there was a wall between them. Uh, and uh, we'll see that as I read a little further. And uh, the 24th verse said, after he cried and said, Father, 
Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So um, the rich man went immediately to hell. Amen. As soon as he died, he went straight to hell. But the, the poor man, the beggar, his spirit was taken immediately into Abraham's bosom. Amen. Uh, but Abraham says, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth all thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Good. Tormented. And besides all this between us and, and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot neither can, cannot neither can they pass to us that would that would come from thence. And then he says, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, and uh, that they may, he may testify unto them, uh, lest they also come into this place of torment. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so uh, we see now that even though he was in torment, he could feel pain. Mm -hmm. uh, he was. Uh, he could uh, think. He had knowledge. He knew where he was at. And this is even after death. Amen. That is so, that his uh, spirit, of course, was in torment. And what he wanted Abraham to do was to send somebody to his father's house and uh, see his brothers. He said, I believe he said he had five brothers and tell them how bad that that place is. Amen. How bad it is so that they might be able to uh, testify to his brothers, amen, and uh, uh, tell them that they didn't want to go there because he was in flames, he was being tormented, amen, and that's day after day, or not, but it was continually torment, continually, and uh, he said in the 31st verse, uh, and he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one rose from the dead. Amen. So uh, we can see now uh, where that their spirit was not here on earth. Immediately they went to, to their uh, uh, heavenly home or to Hades. Amen. And the same thing go with us today, that when we die, our spirit immediately leaves our body. The body is just a just just dead. It's a, a dead house, just like a house that's not lived in. It's just dead. But the spirit and soul departs from the body. And uh, when I'm uh, usually uh, doing um, uh, carrying out a home going service. Uh, that's one of the things that I let people know that what's uh, laying there in the, in, in the casket is not the person, but it's, the, but it's the house that she or he used to live in mm -hmm. because now uh, they have gone on to uh, where uh, 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 either one of the two places. Amen. And so the Greek word now for Hades is revealed in, uh, as a place of departed humans, spirits. Uh, but also, it's revealed as uh, uh, next door as paradise. Amen. For the saved. Mm -hmm. uh, departed human, human spirits for the unsaved. Paradise for the saved. Amen. But we'll, we'll talk about this later. But of course now, when Jesus was resurrected, Amen. The Bible says he went down and brought out, set the captives free. Amen. So, yeah. so at that time, uh, then uh, 
heaven was changed. It was no longer paradise alongside of Hades. Amen. Now heaven is where God is. Amen. Hell is where it always been. There was no change there. Amen. No change there. But uh, heaven has been changed. And after that point, when we die, immediately after we die, uh, amen, if we've been good Christians and, and uh, believe in Jesus Christ and uh, have faith in Jesus Christ, then we are immediately transported to heaven. Amen. amen. And that's at, the, that's at the throne of God. Amen. In his presence. Amen. But at this time that I just read in Luke 16, Jesus had not been crucified. He had not risen from the dead. And so paradise and Hades were close next to each other. And it was a great divide between them. Amen. That separate them. And uh, it's good to read this scripture every now and then because it's a very important scripture to all of us. Amen. Amen. So, so hate is before the resurrection of Christ uh, in this passage, which the word hate is uh, occur, make it clear that hate is was uh, formerly in two divisions. Amen. A place for the unsaved and, of course, paradise. A place for the saved. Amen. 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 So let us go down a little further now to, uh, uh, all right. I'm going to go down to Ephesians now and look at uh, a few verses there. And uh, there's so much to this uh, that uh, we'll need to talk about it another time uh, and continue it for at least a couple of times because there's so much to, to learn about Amen. where the body, uh, about when the spirit leaves the body. Amen. 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 Now, from uh, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, uh, starting from the eighth verse, fourth chapter, starting from the eighth verse. Um, here, uh, Paul writes, wherefore he says, when he ascended up on high, he led, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Amen. Amen. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? And he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fulfill all things. Amen. And Amen. so, as you see from that scripture, <clears throat> uh, after Jesus' res resurrection, uh, um, or you could say, just prior to his resurrection. Amen. He ascended down to Hades. Amen. And not Hades, but he ascended down to paradise. And, and those who were in paradise, he set them free. Amen. And he took them back with him to heaven Amen. at the throne of God. And so there's a change made at that time. Amen. Jesus made the change when he went to the cross and died for us. Amen. Several things happened, of course, while he was on the cross. And that's only one of them. Amen. So, so now paradise is no longer, <clears throat> no longer. Uh, next to Hades, paradise now is heaven, amen, heaven, the third heaven. Now, you do, do know that there are three heavens in your Bible, there's three heavens. Uh, there's a heaven um, right, right where we are and a little over uh, where we are. Uh, there's a second heaven uh, in the universe. The third heaven is where God is. Uh, uh, presides. Amen. So uh, that's what we're talking about tonight. Amen. Now, uh, I'm going to, uh, most most uh, theologians consider uh, the, uh, uh, this is, of course, a place where the change was made. Amen. 
This is the place where the change was made. And as you notice he says, wherefore, uh, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led, led captive, kept it, captivity, captain, captive, and gave gifts unto men. And then it says, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first unto the lower part of the earth? And that's where Hades was located then. And that's where Hades is located now. And the lower parts of the earth. Amen. And he said, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heaven, heavens. Now you notice it says all heavens. Because there are three heavens that he might fill all things. Amen. So it goes into another teaching there. But Jesus is the one that descended into the lower part of the earth. Amen. And those who were in paradise, uh, right alongside of uh, those who were in Hades, were transferred up. Jesus took them up to glory with him. Amen. From that point on, Amen. When we close our eyes in death, uh, then at that time, our spirits leave our body. And of course, uh, it's transferred to heaven right right at that moment. And, and once our eyes close in death, all that, leaves, all that leaves down here is a, a corruptible body that Amen. was soon passed away. Amen. But when we go up to heaven to see Jesus, we are put on an incorruptible body Amen. that will last forever and evermore. Mm. Amen. I just uh, went past one scripture that I wanted to bring up, and that is the second Second Corinthians. Uh, I back backtrack just a little. Second Corinthians, the twelfth uh, chapter, and the first four verses. Second Corinthians. The twelfth chapter, the first four verses. Here Paul writes, It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory, I will come to visions and revelation of the Lord. And then he said, I knew a man, or you could say, I know a man, in Christ about above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth such an one caught up to the third heaven. So, so it goes right back to the three heavens, up to the third heaven. That's where God is. Amen. Now, yeah. Paul is talking about himself. It was Paul who was caught up. Now, he said he didn't know if it was in a vision. Uh, he didn't know if it was just it was a revelation. He didn't know. He said, but the Lord knew. Amen. But what, he, what happened was, uh, when he was caught up there, he said he heard some things that uh, was not, well, not fit for him to repeat. Amen. Amen. It's because uh, uh, some of the things that he heard, um, he didn't write down here what, what it was, but God took him up spiritually wise and spoke to him, amen, while he was still living, talked to him, amen. And then he said now in the third verse, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Or you could say is not permitted for man to utter. Amen. Amen. And of, and of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. Amen. So Paul took on an attitude of not boasting about what God had done for him, but uh, he did. He, he said what he was saying as uh, encouragement to other Christians, so that they would know how uh, how the Lord was blessing him, and and the, and the mission 
that God has sent set him out to do. Amen. And so we can see there that that uh, he was caught up, caught up. Now, um, First Corinthians, the fifteenth chapter, will give us a little more insight uh, on what's going on there. I will start from the fifty-first uh, um, verse. Um, here uh, of the 15th chapter 1st Corinthians Paul said behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible now what he's talking about there is in the last days amen all of the, those who have died and gone on before, uh, they will be raised up. Uh, the cor corruptible bodies will change into incorruptible bodies, and they will meet Jesus in the air. Amen. Those who are even in the sea and in the mountains or wherever they died, uh, they will all rise for the resurrection, and they will all come back together. Amen. Amen. And then when they meet Jesus in the air, the, the Bible says that they will be like him. They will be like him. And so uh, we thank God that, that uh, we'll be like Jesus when that time comes. We will be like Jesus also. All right. And so the wicked dead now uh, in uh, 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians uh, in Hades and the righteous dead. At, uh, at home with the Lord. Both await the resurrection. Amen. Even those who are dying, uh, who, uh, who died today, everybody is waiting for the resurrection. And at the resurrection time, in the last days, then all of us will get up out of our graves. And those who are still living will be able to meet Jesus in the air. The Bible says that uh, the ones that are uh, dead will not <clears throat> not be able to handle those who are alive, but but uh, we will all get to meet Jesus in the air. But uh, our Bible tells us that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Amen. And then those who follow are still alive will get come together and meet Jesus in, in the air. Amen. 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 And so, uh, uh, all of this points towards one thing, and that is, as Christians, uh, we must believe that when we die, uh, that uh, uh, we are going immediately with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Immediately with the Lord. Amen. I can remember uh, one sister telling me that before she died, uh, she said, don't worry about me. Uh, she said, because I've already been there. And the Lord have already showed me around. Mm. Amen. And of course, she passed away a few days, maybe two days after that. Yeah. Amen. Already already there. God has a way of uh, uh, taking care of his people. Now, yeah. um, we'll go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, because... Uh, uh, I think it's important for us to know that uh, just who who God is and all of these things and uh, and what's going on at the 12th chapter, starting from the 5th verse of Ecclesiastes. And uh, from the 5th verse, <clears throat> the Bible reads, And when they shall be afraid of that which is high, fear shall be in the way. And the almond tree shall flourish, the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall, shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the street. Amen. Amen. Now, so he's talking about death, of course, and, and then he'll go on to say uh, in the next verse, uh, even the silver cord be loosened. Or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, 
are the wheel broken at schism. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Now you know the dust, he's talking about man, will return because you know we're made uh, from the earth. Amen. Amen. And God breathed into us uh, uh, a breath of life and we became a living soul. Amen. Amen. So, so he said, and the spirit shall return. Now I want you to notice this. Unto God who gave it. So um, this is why I said now, uh, there's no spirits hanging around down here on earth. That, that scripture there tell you that our spirit will return to God who gave it. And God gave us our natural spirit. He gave us the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. But the spirit of God will return back to the God who gave it. And of Amen. course, uh, and uh, in the beginning, uh, God breathed the breath of life into Adam, and he became a living soul. Amen. Amen. So without the breath of life, and the breath of life was considered as the spirit. Amen. Amen. But non, small s, the spirit, because everybody is born with a spirit. Amen. Amen. Everybody is born with a spirit, but not the Holy Spirit. Amen. So Amen. when we have received Jesus Christ in our lives, uh, at that time, the Holy Spirit will come into our lives. And it was Paul who said that all, uh, there's a fight going on all the time. Mm. Amen. In our lives. Amen. The Holy Spirit will tell us to do the right thing. But the small, worldly, natural spirit will try to lead us astray. So there's a struggle going on. Amen. But yeah. when we, as soon as we close our eyes in death, uh, we can see there that our spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Amen. 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 Um, let's look at Luke, the eighth chapter. And, uh, okay, the eighth chapter. Uh, just about to it, just about to it. Amen. Amen. All right. And that is the uh, uh, 55th verse. Uh, and of course, this verse is uh, about uh, the young lady that was sick. Um, she was a maiden. And uh, Jesus brought her back alive. And a spirit came back to her. Amen. Um, from the 51st verse. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in except save Peter and James and John. And the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, that's Jesus says, weep, weep not. She is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that, he, that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. 55th verse. And her spirit came again. And she arose straightway. And he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what he had done, what was done. Amen. So there again, uh, 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 she was dead, but Jesus brought her back alive, and her spirit had already left her. But when Jesus told her to rise again, get up, made her rise. Her spirit came back into a body because without the spirit in us, we're dead. Amen. Amen. We know that uh, the soul is the seat of our emotions. Amen. Everything that we uh, uh, feel bad about, uh, our happiness, 
a joy all is in uh, uh, in the soul because that's where we in other words um, anything that we see feel sorry about or anything we feel joy about is all in the soul Amen. and so really it's the soul that would be saved Amen. The soul that would be saved. Because the Bible speaks of all the souls around the throne of God. Amen. Amen. It doesn't mention the spirits around the throne of God, but all the souls around the throne of God because they have a special a special thing to do. And that is to hold on to all of our emotions and, and keep our temples in check and keep when we someone pass away in our family, we feel sorrowful. Uh, it bring tears to our eyes. All of that is in our soul. Amen. But the spirit is like a breath. Not the Holy Spirit, but the natural spirit. That was the breath that God breathed into Adam. And he became a living soul. <clears throat> so without that breath of being able to breathe, we are dead already. Amen. Amen. We're dead already. But with the breath of life, as long as we keep breathing, of course, uh, as long as we keep breathing, we're alive. Amen. But the Holy Spirit works a little different. Amen. We're all born and shaped in iniquity. Amen. All of us have been born in sin and shaped Amen. in iniquity. Amen. But we need the Holy Spirit in our lives to lead and guide us. Amen. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Amen. He is our intercessor. He does all of those things for us that we can't do ourselves. Amen. So he lead and guide our footsteps. Amen. So so he's a, the Holy Spirit is important in our lives. Amen. I know uh, uh, many churches don't even mention the Holy Spirit, but he, he is a he. Amen. He's a he. And he's part of the Trinity of God. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we thank God for that. And uh, we'll look at a couple of more scriptures here, and then we will be coming pretty close to the close of our... Uh, Amen. All right. Uh, Amen. And so uh, the scripture that I would lo love to talk about tonight, and I don't know if we have time, is uh, the Apostle Paul uh, talks about the struggle that he was having. Amen. He said to be absent from the body. To be absent from the body is to be home with the Lord. Amen. So, so what he's talking about is as soon as we die, we are absent from the body because we are body, soul, and spirit. God is God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. So when Amen. we die, our spirit and soul leaves us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Now, so that takes place immediately. There's, there's no fooling around there. It takes place immediately right throughout the New Testament. Amen. So we're going to uh, close out our teaching for tonight. And uh, we pray that you've got something out of it. And again, I would ask you to bring your Bibles so that you can follow scriptures as they're read and that you can come to a good understanding of what God is talking about. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. Uh, let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Father who are in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for another opportunity to teach your word. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to bless us and bless all of us who are on the line tonight and those who I can see on the, on the Zoom. Oh, God, we pray that you would touch hearts and minds. And, oh, God, bring us all to a good understanding. 
of what the Word of God is all about. And we know that we don't reach this uh, with knowledge and understanding overnight. But it takes a lot of study and it takes a lot of preparing our hearts. Amen. Before we can even prepare others. So we thank you for what you've done and we thank you for what you're doing right now. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Amen. 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 Now for the benediction, I may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now henceforth and forever. Let us all say it together. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank y'all for coming. Thank you hey, so much. Mary. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much for, recording. for coming on tonight. And uh, we pray that you will continue to do that on Tuesday nights. Amen. And of course, don't forget on uh, Thursday nights, we have a question and answer period. And Friday night, of course, uh, Dr. Shari Herring.